Hmm, that kind of looks fun. Hey, I bet I could make a game like that. Yeah, a hard game with a unique mechanic. <gasps> and I have an idea. Oh, it's so simple. I could probably do this in like two weeks. This guy is an idiot. Two weeks? What was I thinking? Oh my god. Over the next 48 weeks, I spent hundreds of hours on a project I initially thought I could finish over Christmas break. And for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to tell you the exact story of how I made the hardest game ever made. Before I can even start making a game, I have to pick something called a game engine. A game engine simply makes coding much easier because without a game engine, I would have to code everything from scratch. And guess how much coding experience I have? It's a whopping zero. So because I had no programming experience, naturally I chose to go with the simplest language I could find online, Game Maker. And after looking online, I found a couple of cool tile sets to use to just kind of get started. But unknown to me at the time, these two decisions would end up causing me more headaches than I could have ever imagined. However, before I can get into that, I have to actually make the mechanics of a game. Well, dang, that was quick. The simple mechanics are done. Look at that. You can jump, move, go slow, go fast, regular speed, and when I hit a wall, the character turns around. Speaking of which, now might be a good time to actually explain the game's controls. Obviously, to make a difficult game, there needs to be what I like to call a gimmick. In Pogo Stuck, it's the Pogo Stick. In Getting Over It, it's the fact that you control a hammer with a mouse. In Only Up, the gimmick is that it's complete BS and the map is way too long and so any fall costs you like an hour. But in my game, the gimmick is, you can't turn around. Look at him go, look at this guy. He's just going the same direction. Oh, but what's this? Watch what happens when this pixelated nose combines with this gray wall. <gasps> he turns around. Whoa, what a gimmick. Although, let's be real, that's pretty boring. So I needed a little way to spice up the gameplay. What did I come up with? Controlling your speed and jump height. That's right, you can now jump by holding the space bar. Mind-blowing. But what's actually unique from a lot of these games is you can stop your jump short by letting go of spacebar. You can't do this in a lot of these Foddian games like Pogo Stuck or Jump King, where once you've committed to the jump, that's it. You better hope that you set it up right. My game, you can actually adjust on the fly by letting go of the button. But let's give the players even more control. Watch this. Turbo mode. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's going that much faster, but he's actually going twice as fast. And you can control the character with three different speeds. Slow speed, which is half of his regular running speed. Normal speed, where you don't hold anything. And fast speed, where you go twice the speed. Obviously, none of these involve you actually changing directions, which can be really tricky at first because you'll try to hit backwards to turn around, but it doesn't turn around, it just slows you down. These two mechanics give players a ton of freedom. With the ability to control your jump height and your speed, you can actually maneuver a lot better than you can in a lot of other Foddian games. Threading gaps, jumping over walls, and even hitting walls on purpose to go back through the exact same path, but with a new area that you can now reach because you're facing the other way. So day one, I'm experimenting with these new dynamics to kind of see how they feel. And then I had an idea. Wall jumps, which I immediately renamed power walls. Now, if you see this yellow wall, that's a power wall, and you can wall jump off of it by doing a not so precise input. It's supposed to be fun, and it looks mad cool. Boom! Look at that. Look at him go. Now, I do want to point out that you are seeing footage of the actual game. The test looked like this. Abysmal. So I think for that reason, I am going to stick to showing a lot of the newer footage because it just looks better. So with all these new mechanics, I was getting quite excited. It was time to make a test map. So I made this small, tiny level, sent it to Froggy, played it myself, and had my brother play it. As you can see, it's super basic and nothing like the final product, although I do want to point out that while it took me five minutes to beat, my brother eight minutes to beat this little thing, it took Froggy one hour and 15 minutes. Bruh. This guy is so bad. But it was at this point that I had to make a decision because this was taking a long time. In fact, finishing this little test map marked 40 hours of me working on this project. That's a long time. And if you're keeping track, that's half of the time that I thought it would take to make the entire game. So I had to make a decision throw out the 40 hours I spent over the last seven days and drop the project, going back to things that I know work like my YouTube channel or things that definitely could work like college, which by the way is where I am right now recording this video, thus dropping the project and losing all that time or giving it my absolute best effort, making the game as fun and enjoyable as humanly possible with the best music controls, graphics, and visuals I can possibly implement. And it would probably take so much longer, cost so much more than I had ever anticipated just one week ago. All these things were on my mind and on the line Saturday as I jumped through this training room of ugly, boring gray blocks. And it was right there 
that I made a decision and I chose to continue. So at this point, all the goals changed from deadlines to just if possible dates. And as it turns out, there's a lot more to a high quality game than I initially thought. Well, we need some game mechanics and hey, look at that already done, but they need work. Big work. Way too many physics errors, clunky controls, warping through blocks, all of that stuff is mad prevalent in this test version that you're not seeing because I've cut it out. Next, we need map design. Arguably the second most important aspect of any Fodian game is the map. You want a map to be difficult, remember, because there's no checkpoints, but at the same time, it's important that it doesn't feel impossible or too difficult. If every single jump puts you at 0%, no one will want to play it. So I wanted to make sure the map started out easy and then got harder so that it was available to anyone and all skill levels could adapt to this map. I'm also going to need sound effects, which was surprisingly more difficult than I thought it would be. I'm also going to need an original soundtrack, online multiplayer, a trailer. Important, but it's kind of irrelevant until all the art is... <sighs> oh my god, that's a lot of art. Asset art, character art, homepage art, background art, steam art, particles which are technically art. This is bad. I can't draw for crap. Remember when I picked that tile set way back on the first day to test stuff? Well, that has come back to be a major problem. If you look around on Steam, you'll notice there are really only two types of art styles for 2D games. The first is a style I like to call 2.5D, where it's a 2D camera, but it's using 3D graphics. Pogo Stuck is a great example of this, getting over it as well. The other is pixel art, where the screen is actually pixelated on purpose to give that old retro style, like Jump King is. However, these art styles already had their respective games, so I wanted to try the daring and least popular third art style, hand-drawn art. This art style is very uncommon and rarely ever chosen by small or solo indie developers, simply because of how difficult it is to get assets made in this art style. With pixel art, there's a lot of artists for that, but with cartoon or hand-drawn graphics, there's not. On Fiverr, there are a ton of pixel art artists, as you can see, but now let's try to find the cartoons. None. This is the only one. I'm not joking, this is literally the only one. Meanwhile, while I look for artists to make my game look good, I need an artist to make my game sound good. I need a composer for the OST. OST is short for Original Soundtrack, and it is a music that is exclusively made for a video game. So many games have OSTs, and I wanted mine to be no exception to that. But I can't compose at all. So I posted on Reddit. Which is just, wow, what a great decision. I don't know what I was thinking, honestly, posting on Reddit. But I wasn't asking about music, I was just posting about the game with early access footage. But I got a DM from someone. A professional composer, hello, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I clicked their message, hey, blah, 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 blah. Please tell me more. And they told me their price. $15 per minute of song. Psych! It's 150! So while looking for these artists and composers, I kept myself busy by working on the most important part of the game in my opinion, the map. The map must be able to be beaten by players of all skill levels. I'm proud to say that I was not really doing that at first. A lot of sections were hard, but this area from about 15 to 40% was especially egregious. So even though I had spent over 15 hours designing this section, I nuked it. Everything after like 15%, select all, delete. I know a lot of the time sequels to movies are bad, but oh boy did mine deliver because this second and revised map is 85 times better than the first one. However, you've been watching me jump on all this stuff with the art. Well, let's take a look at what it was with no art. Yeah. You've probably been wondering what the difference between these two characters is. Well, the character turned out to be the single most expensive thing in this entire game. The price of this character was the price of everything else combined. But it wasn't like that at first. I actually went through multiple character designers before finally getting one. Starting with this person in March. This artist had worked on a prototype design for us and I was really excited. They were sending me like little sample animations which were looking okay but they needed a bit of work. However, out of nowhere, they just disappeared. I'm not joking, they actually just disappeared. Even right now, I've never heard from them again. So after a few months, I decided I needed to move on and try to find someone else. Eventually, I found an artist who claimed that they could make a character animation for me, but they wanted 500 smackaroonies. <laughs> prepaid. I said, ain't no way. I'll prepay you 100 bucks, maybe, but I need that back if it's not good. So I sent them the $100, and um, they did some sketches, but they were so bad. I asked for revisions. They wouldn't make them right. And then I just said, you know what? Just do an animation. They sent me back the animation. 
and I'll let you watch it yourself. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! $500? Nah, give me a refund. Anyway, I was running out of options because everywhere I posted trying to find an artist for the character, nobody was responding. I posted a little Reddit post, one singular DM, someone named Jarda. Hey, I think I could help you with the animation. Added him on Discord, and he sent me some of his portfolio. Wow, that's good animation right there. My spirits were getting lifted, I'll be honest. This was literally the last person. If this did not work out, I don't know if I'd be making this video right now. Jarda sent me some sketches, which honestly looked kind of creepy. His sketching style is actually really spooky. But then he sent me an actual render. Whew! He charged a lot, I'll be honest. But at this point, I was so desperate, I was willing to pay pretty much anything. Customizable characters. Backpack. A cape? Hello? All of it customizable to show off to your friends online. And in addition, some of the other artists were getting finished as well. Things like this cool sphinx. The backgrounds for these caves. The diamonds. Even these vines. Oh wait, I made those. Yeah, I know. No big deal. I know. I learned a little bit of Adobe Illustrator. If it makes you feel any better, I also tried to make like a cliff section for like the top area. It looked like this. And so I ended up turning it into an outer space section. I mean, it looks good for an outer space section, but should just know this was supposed to be like the cliffs of a mountain. So while I'm placing all this stuff down and tweaking the map here and there, it's taking a lot of time. And so I'm listening to a lot of music sung by this man named Curryboe98, who makes Nintendo remixes, specifically turning songs from majors into minors. It's like a really weird like thing for someone to listen to on repeat. But, but I was thinking, man, how does he make those? So I checked the comments. And one of the comments was like, man, how do you make these? And Curryba responded and said, oh, I just recreate the entire song. This guy recreates the entire Mario song, like every instrument. He recreates every single one just to change the key. I joined the Discord so fast and messaged him like within five seconds, asking him if he could do the OST for the game. Please, please can he do it? He can, for only $10 a track? It's literally free. It actually was so low that I told him I'd give him 20 because literally $10 is just absurd. Within two days, he sent me the first track, a banger. Take a listen. Nah, actually, you don't get to listen. It's so good, I'm gonna let it play while I'm talking right now. Now with this amazing music blasting in my ears, I felt like I could do anything. I kept going through the map, playtesting and nerfing. In fact, this area got nerfed 27 times. That's how much I wanted it to be fun. Because anytime I would fall and I would be like, oh, that was kind of BS, I would just make it easier. So you're welcome, by the way. The game's easier because of me playing it. And I like hard games, and I made it easier for you. For you. For you. You new player who's watching this video thinking, oh, I will never play these kinds of games. I made it easier for you. Think about that. Finally, I had some sound effects and particles, which I just brushed over that in one sentence, making it sound easy, but that was like, you know, 50 to 100 hours of work. But, you know, no big deal. I just kind of brushed over it. And finally, it was time for a test. I knew we could test because we had everything done. So I thought. Well, I sent the game out to a handful of people in my Discord, including a former Pogo Star world record holder but disaster struck it was lagging bad like really bad people with decent setups were getting 20 fps on the game people with bad setups were getting five i was absolutely mind blown because on my computer it had been fine everything was running at 60 fps suddenly i give it out and it's running at 20 fps on people's computers this is unacceptable we cannot send a game out like this and then i stumbled upon this funny thing called vram remember how i told you how i have zero programming experience i also don't know very much about computers i did not realize that ram and vram are very very different let me break it down for you in five seconds ram is memory that your computer uses to hold things like your google chrome tabs or this video you're watching if you're watching it on your computer or phone right now ram remembers that it was there so if you go tab out and do something else which you never should because you're watching my video and when you come back it'll still be here that's ram holding on to it but vram is a little different vram is actually the stuff that you see on your screen well like i mentioned we have a bunch of high quality assets so the vram was uh being consumed at you know um six gigs and the average that people have is like two. Anyway, after literally 16 hours, I was able to get the VRAM down from about six gigs to about 1.5 or a little less than one. So after getting the VRAM down, I'm thinking it's time for another test. Let's do it. Send out the test again. And we're still lagging. Their GPUs are still running at 100%. That's not good. Why is a 2D game with some pictures making your computer run at 100%? Well, I spent the next 12 hours looking for this bug. And at 3 a.m., I found it. For some reason, this blur that is applied to the background causes an extreme amount of what are called texture swaps, which apparently increases GPU usage or whatever. Simply turning off these blurs instantly 
fixed the problem and a bunch of other small effects that I needed to disable, but mostly the blurs. Having figured this out, I was also able to implement various other things to reduce lag. I'm actually so glad that it was lagging this badly during our test because it gave me the idea to implement quality settings. That way you can try to run it on pretty much any setup. Over the last 15 to 20 minutes, I've covered over eight months of development and I felt we were close to release. So I started to promote the game a little bit while Froggy worked on the online multiplayer and I embarked on one of the most ruthless promotional campaigns I have ever done in my life. You might've noticed I uploaded a little bit more than usual these last Last couple of weeks. Well, that's because of this game. I have never worked so hard before. I researched websites. I looked up content creators. I've signed up for mailing services. I even talked to the developer of Pogo Stuck himself. Like, what? Why is he giving me tips? He didn't have to do that. What a nice guy. I even made an announcement trailer when the game wasn't even finished yet. This announcement trailer that's playing in the background right now hides like five completely broken aspects of the game. And right now, as I'm reading this script, we have 626 wish lists, which is well below the recommended. 7,000? It's way less than I had hoped for, but it's not the first time I've encountered a roadblock while working on this game, okay? And uh, this one will be overcome just like I've overcome every other one. After making the trailer in the first video where I promoted the game, I worked to add a bunch of final features and aspects to make the game just a little bit better, like a leaderboard which shows the top times of everyone in the world, some additional particles here and there, a leaderboard in the game, a better percentage, a better timer, a bunch of that fun stuff that makes this quality life improvements. Not to mention nerfing the game several times based on how much my roommate complained. Yep, I actually nerfed sections because my roommate complained it was too difficult. I even commissioned art for the Steam page which looks amazing. Speaking of which, I bet you're wondering when does the game release? Well, it releases in 48 hours from now, of course. <laughs> actually, this is a re-upload, so it's already out. So if you're watching this anytime after two days of it being up, then the game is already out. Yes, I'm cutting it this close to the deadline. I plan to stream the game, of course, and I hope countless other creators do as well. It's literally the perfect game for content and the perfect game for having fun. I've spent the last 10 months trying to make a challenge that's fun because a lot of times I feel like when you make a difficult level, the fun gets lost in it. But my goal from the very beginning was to make something hard, but that was fun and that anyone could win. The kind of game you'll have memories from for years to come. I hope I've been able to succeed in that because that was my goal from the very start. When I started out, I wanted to make a challenging game because I wanted to experience the roller coaster of emotions these games provide. The type of fun Pogo Stuck provided. The feeling of overcoming a difficult challenge after hours of work and effort. But in the process, the original goal had been lost. I wanted to make something I could experience on stream with my viewers. But in making the game, it just wasn't challenging for me anymore. In my effort to make a challenge, I had spoiled the ending for myself. But as I uploaded the final build to Steam, I felt a strange feeling. It was the same feeling I had when I beat Pogo Stuck for the first time, but so much stronger. An intense satisfaction and happiness at finally finishing. And that's when I realized the real challenge for me was never in the game itself, but the journey to make it come to life. And while beating Pogo Stuck was super satisfying, beating a game I made tastes a little bit sweeter. Click the top link in the description to play the game for yourself. Thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. And see you next time.